Hello friends and welcome to this channel. Acute kidney injury, previously called as acute renal failure, is a syndrome of decreased renal function, measured by serum creatinine, or urine output. This reduction in renal function occurs over hours to days. AKI has many different causes and may be multifactorial in a given patient. In this video, we will give you 10 practical points about acute kidney injury. Number 1. Definition The Kidney Diseases, Improving Global Outcomes Guidelines, define acute kidney injury as a greater than 26 micromol per liter rise in creatinine within 48 hours. A more than 1.5 times rise in creatinine from that of baseline level within 7 days. Urine output less than 0.5 milliliters per kg per hour for more than 6 consecutive hours. Number 2. Once AKI is diagnosed, its severity shall then be staged. AKI can be staged in one of the three stages, according to the highest creatinine rise, longest period of oliguria, or severity of oliguria. AKI is stage 1, when serum creatinine has raised by 26.5 micromol per liter. Or, the rise in creatinine is 1.5 to 1.9 times that of its baseline. Or, when urine output is less than 0.5 milliliters per kg per hour for 6 to 12 hours. AKI will fall in stage 2 if the rise in creatinine is 2 to 2.9 times that of its baseline. Or, when urine output is less than 0.5 milliliters per kg per hour, persisting for more than 12 hours. And, AKI will be stage 3 if Serum creatinine is greater than 353.6 micromol per liter. Or, the rise in creatinine is greater than three times that of its baseline. Or, patient on renal replacement therapy. Or, the urine output is less than 0.3 milliliters per kg per hour for greater than 24 hours. Or, there is anuria for more than 12 hours. Number 3. Most common causes of AKI. You already know the etiological classification of AKI into prerenal, renal, and postrenal causes. Among these, all the most common causes that lead to AKI are sepsis, after major surgery, cardiogenic shock, hypovolemia, drugs like NSAIDs, ACE inhibitors, or angiotensin II receptor blockers, and aminoglycosides hepatorenal syndrome, and urinary tract obstruction. Number 4. Treat hypovolemia promptly. As prerenal AKI is most commonly due to hypovolemia, and its correction can prevent progression of prerenal AKI to renal AKI, treat it when you find it. Examine the fluid status of patient by examining heart rate, blood pressure, JVP, capillary refill, and urine output. If there is hypovolemia, give 250 to 500 milliliters intravenous bolus fluid and repeat until volume is replete. If 2 liters fluid is given without response, seek expert help from ICU. Number 5. Monitoring of AKI patient. Monitor vital signs at least every 4 hours. Fluid balance calculation is also vital in AKI. Consider urinary catheterization and measure hourly urine output. Potassium is checked initially to see response to treatment of hyperkalemia and it shall then be checked at least daily until creatinine falls. Lactate is measured if there are signs of sepsis. Creatinine is tested daily until it decreases. It must be noted that creatinine lags behind clinical response by almost 24 hours. Number 6. Pulmonary edema in AKI. If the patient with AKI has signs and symptoms of pulmonary edema, early referral to nephrologist is essential for possible urgent hemodialysis. Number 7. Potassium levels in AKI. Hyperkalemia is a risk in renal failure. Check potassium levels of the patient urgently. 
Treat hyperkalemia if potassium level is more than 6.5 millimol per liter, or if there are ECG changes consistent with hyperkalemia. Number 8. Renal Replacement Therapy Renal replacement options for AKI include hemodialysis and hemofiltration. Continuous renal replacement therapy, or CRRT, is useful for ICU patients who are hemodynamically unsuitable to undergo dialysis. Peritoneal dialysis is rarely done in AKI. Number 9. Indications for renal replacement therapy in AKI. Decision for renal replacement therapy in AKI should be individualized. Possible indications for RRT in AKI include Fluid overload, especially pulmonary edema, that is unresponsive to the medical treatment. Severe or prolonged metabolic acidosis. Persistent or recurrent hyperkalemia despite medical treatment. And uremia, like uremic pericarditis or uremic encephalopathy. Number 10. Indications for referring patients with AKI to the nephrologist. Referral to nephrologist shall be done if AKI is not responding to treatment. AKI with complications, such as hyperkalemia, acidosis, and fluid overload. Stage 3 AKI. AKI with difficult fluid balance, such as due to hypoalbuminemia, heart failure, or in pregnancy. AKI due to possible intrinsic renal disease, so that diagnostic evaluation can be done, like renal biopsy and AKI with hypertension. And that is it for this video. Dear friends, it's been six years, this channel is helping medical community with its videos. We've recently received this comment. Which actually is true, unfortunately. So, can you subscribe to this channel and share with your friends to help this channel grow? This will encourage us to continue doing our efforts. Thank you.